Hey everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And this weekend, I am on MSC Cruises, the Davina. And so I wanted to give you all a quick tour of what this cruise ship looks like. Now, if you are looking at taking this cruise ship, it is a 2010 build. It has not been amped or doesn't look like it has any kind of upgrades to it since then. But it is going to be a 2010 build, which is similar to what you would see on a Voyager class ship with Royal Caribbean. So that's your uh, Mariner of the Seas, Navigator of the Seas, Adventurer of the Seas. However, the design of this ship is going to be more like a Vision class ship. So it is like a really large Vision class ship, if you will. So size-wise, it's a Voyager. The way that it's designed and set up, it's more like the Vision class. So let's get on in and give you a tour of MSC's Davina. All right, so I am starting here in the aft section of the ship. There are a lot of pools on this ship, and I've been really impressed with the layout and the design. This probably is the most popular pool on the ship. It is, um, I don't know if it's considered an infinity pool. You see that it does carry over there. They're gonna have a lot of space that goes from the water into a sitting area or a seated area, um, but it looks really neat, and it is here right on the aft section of the ship. If you turn around, you'll see that this is the Disarano bar. Also, I'm gonna to try to get the names of all these locations correct on the ship, um, but a lot of them are in Italian or they're in a different language. As part of it being a European cruise line is the names are a little bit different. So I may not get all of those accurate or correct. <coughs> this is also a weekend cruise. So I am not um, pretending to be an expert on this ship. Um, by the way, I'm on deck, I think this is deck 16. Um, actually, I am on deck 15. Um, so with that, um, I'll go upstairs, I guess, give you a tour of deck 16 real quick. So again, this is a weekend cruise. So I have been here since Friday. It is now Sunday, and it is the first opportunity I've got to really walk around and give you all a tour of this ship. So this is their arena. This is their sports court, if you will, where you can play. Um, basketball, soccer, football. And it's kind of neat how they've got um, the seating over here, the stadium seating. Really makes it feel like you're in a um, auditor or auditorium or atrium um, watching the sports. You also are gonna have a hot tub up here. So this ship is has an abundance of hot tubs. Uh, so if you wanna find one of those, that is pretty easy to do. And you can go back to the rear section of deck 16 after that. So if you want to squirrel away, you've got Le Preux, which is the hot tub up here, or maybe that's the section, I'm not sure. <laughs> so we are in the Marine Reserve, their private island today. So some things could be closed that we can't have access to. Normally these chairs would be out. We were supposed to be here for two days yesterday, um, and unfortunately we did have a sea day. Um, because we could not get into their dock. So this is the suite lounge upstairs. Um, it is currently open on the other side, but I am not staying here in the yacht club. So <clears throat> I'm gonna head back down to deck 15 so I can show you more of the pools and the setup of their outdoor space. It is a beautiful day here. They have a little tugboat over here, it looks like, that is stationed. I don't know if that tugboat helped us get in this morning or not. Um, there was definitely a lot of movement of the engines getting us in. You've got the kids' area over here. Um, it's kind of nice that they gave the kids' area an outdoor space for them to uh, be able to play and hang out. They've got it all decorated for Halloween with different decorations inside of their kids' area. So you see that they've got even a TV show or a movie that they've made called Cabin 12006. Sounds like one that I would book because it's uh, probably easier to memorize. Walking out a little bit further, you're gonna see the main pool. Though this is not really uh, the primary pool, I would say. It doesn't stay as busy as that aft one that I just showed you, which is also the adults only pool back there. So if you come here, you'll see that they do have several hot tubs once again. Some people choosing to stay on the ship, though I have seen some that have already gone off to the island and have come back. But it is a really neat setup here. I like the design of it. A lot of different neat elements uh, to it, giving it what I've got a lot of texture and character to the design of the pool. Have your stage where the sell away party is. 
They had a great turnout for it. This is a weekend crew, so the people are definitely on the party hardy kind of side. But you'll see you've got hot tubs here. In addition to, there'll be a few more later on, but it is a really neat kind of setup. Two more hot tubs up on this deck as well. So they've got them on deck 14, deck 15, and deck 16. All are gonna have hot tubs, and I have not seen them packed. One thing that is really kind of surprised me on this ship is I've not seen a lot of children, uh, which is kind of unique. I expected on a weekend cruise that there probably would be a lot of kids, and I have not seen that many kids at all. But speaking of kids, here are some places, some activities that you can have. You've got ping pong, you've got foosball, lots of fun. So if you want to hang out here, you can certainly do that with the kiddos. And you're going to have the inside area. I don't know what they call their solarium. That is the Royal Caribbean um, version that I'm accustomed to. As you all know, this is my first MSC sailing. So you see there are three hot tubs in here as well, um, which is really, really nice. Again, I've not seen any of these overly crowded, which has been a wonderful thing. One thing when you, you know, look up or research MSC is you will very quickly see that they've got their yacht club. So that is their exclusive um, ship within a ship model. So I don't have access to go into the yacht club, but that is the high end um, or higher end of the ship where you're staying in a suite and getting some extra amenities because of that. So that's all the pools. I think that there's another section in the yacht club that'll give you an additional pool, but we'll walk down one more floor um, to deck 14 before going inside. Now, one of the most popular bars, interestingly enough, has been this solarium bar. And this bar here, and I need to stop calling it the solarium bar. It is not the name of this place. Um, but you see that there is a nice bar here. This has been one of the more popular bars on the ship. So this, as much as it's a pool, is really more of a hangout spot. So you see there's no lounge chairs, there's no way to really hang out beside of the pool. You have these tables where people can gather and enjoy themselves. And so it turns out to be more of a hangout spot versus people getting in the pool. So if you want a little bit more space in the pool, I would encourage you to come to this area. And you can normally always get in with only two or three people there. And we're almost at a full sailing um, on this ship. Coming outside to the pool deck, the first thing you're going to see is the soft serve ice cream. This was extremely popular when it opened up the other morning. It had about 30 to 40 people probably waiting in line. So if you want to get there, make sure you are coming earlier. Now this is going to give you a different view of the aqua park. This is, as you can see, the main swimming pool area, even though, again, not the most popular one or most crowded one but it's got some really cool textures and characteristics to it. So you can walk up to one of the sun areas and you're gonna see all these different layers and sections that make up their pool. And I really like how they brought in a bunch of texture to make um, their pool deck actually look a little bit different and unique, not just a pool in the middle of the ship, but they've got some items around it. You've got normal lounge chairs there, but there weren't a lot of lounge chairs on this ship. There were a lot more of these tables that you will see over on the right hand side. Those were extremely popular. There were a lot of the, you know, family reunions or birthday parties, different groups that, you know, took those for the entire day. So those were extremely popular. There's two bars here. You'll see the one on the right. There's also one on the left. Extremely popular. This is a weekend cruise. And somebody asked me in the comments, um, did they have a drink package? They absolutely did have a drink package. So if you want that, you can drink up. And one of their better ideas, I thought, was they put the gelato stand right beside of the pool, which is a fantastic location. I know other places um, have put it inside, which is not as easy to get to. All right, so that is the outdoor space here on the MSC Divina. Let me change camera lenses and I'm gonna show you all the interior spaces now. All right, so this is the place that I had dinner the very first night. It is the Galaxy Disco. And you're probably going, Brandon, that is the disco. How did you have dinner there? Well, they've made a really good use of space of their dance floor. So you can't see it here. This is a sitting area during the day where you can do some awesome people watching. You know, I'm always looking for those kind of spots over the pool, but you'll also see that this doubles as a restaurant. So, you know, the nightclub is only really used at night. How can they ensure they are putting this space to good use 
And so they have made it a restaurant as well. Here's your check-in counter over here on the right. And you're gonna see that there's plenty of seating here. I sat at this table all the way by the window when I was here and it was absolutely gorgeous. One thing that I've learned is if you can have a specialty dining restaurant on the first night, you all know that the first night can be a little bit hectic and chaotic, get one with a view. So when you are sailing away, check your sail away time as it's different on every ship, you can have amazing views leaving the port that you're going to. And so that is just a really good tip that I've recently stumbled across and something that I am personally a huge fan of. Here on the MSC Davina, you're also gonna have a virtual wood and an F1 simulator. Lots of noise as we come through here with the different kid machines and games. These are all an additional cost. Looks like they're $2.50 to play, but certainly something that you can do. Here's Virtual World. So it looks like it may be actually closed at the moment. That's where they're gonna have the F1, F1 um, car. You can't really see it in there. And they've got one other virtual type of experience that you can pay extra for. If you do status match, so one thing that is neat about MSC is you can status match with just about any kind of loyalty program to their cruise line. And with that, they are gonna offer you the ability to um, you know, have a discount if you get it at a certain level to those virtual tracks. All right, so here we are coming up to the elevator section. One thing that I'll say about the MSC ship is you've got elevator spread in all sorts of random places. So right now I'm on deck 15. I do wanna walk down, down to deck 14. That's where the um, dining room, or excuse me, the buffet is going to be. But their elevators are just about everywhere. So if you turn a corner, be on the lookout for an elevator. It's not like other ships where they have solid elevator banks. Here they're gonna have them kinda all over the place. So instead of walking outside where the pool is, we're gonna turn this way and I'm gonna show you what their Calumet buffet looks like on the inside. I believe they have switched over to lunch. If you're looking for specialty dining, here's one of the packages that they have, 75 a person, 99 a person, or 135. I have not tried the butcher's cut, but I liked Galaxy when um, I was able to go there and check it out. So this buffet is set up like you know any kind of oasis uh, buffet, I would say, where it is a split plan where you can come in on the left, or you can come in on the right. So not like the Wonder that has a central entrance, but they will have it where you can come in on both sides. And the food's gonna be the same. Regardless of the side that you go to, it's gonna be the exact same. So let me pan over here, show you what all they kind of serve. There is a bar on the other side over here where I've been getting my coffee in the morning. That's the earliest place that opens up. You've got some food over there and you're gonna have fruit, cheeses, lots of Mediterranean kind of items. It is a European cruise line, so you're gonna see a lot of that in their buffet. Overall, I would say the food selection is a little bit more healthy than what I found on other cruise lines. Doesn't mean that there are not healthy options here. I certainly uh, had a donut and a sweet brioche roll this morning for breakfast, so you can certainly find um, unhealthy options here if you want to but very similar to other cruise lines, make sure you are pushing all the way to the back. They're gonna have even more food. If you see a line up at the front, keep walking. There will be other options available for you versus staying in the one main spot there. That's where everybody's gonna congregate. The pizza here, they have pizza on their buffet, has been really unique style pizza. And I'll say that it is very popular. Their fruit dishes have also been really good and really ripe, definitely on the sweeter side but I have enjoyed their fruit um, more so than I have on other cruise lines where it might just not be quite ripe enough yet. During the day, like any cruise line, this area can get a little crowded. So you wanna make sure um, you are giving yourself time to find seating or you're coming in off peak hours. I'm just gonna peek around this corner quickly. A lot of this has been sectioned off while I've been here but you do have beautiful views from the very back of the ship. It's kind of a shame that they have um, sectioned this off so you can't actually sit in that section right now. All right, we'll walk back out and I'll see if I can't give you a look at some of the other food that they have. There is the private marine reserve out the window if you can see that when it changes. So everybody is eating on the island. They've got snack shacks 
They've got a larger um, buffet style restaurant out there as well. So a lot of people are on the island right now. So I wanted to take this opportunity to come on here and show you guys what all the ship has to offer. I, one thing I'm gonna point out quickly, I'm a fan of their coffee cups. They're branded with MSC on them. Um, they're just really neat. So something that um, I think other cruise lines probably have a little bit of an opportunity to improve is some of the branding like that. I just thought it was a really neat touch. Though the cynic in me also questions how many people probably leave the cruise ship with uh, one of those cups in their bag. Not saying that I thought about it, but I still know that um, a lot of things like to be lifted sometimes. So it's interesting how they put seating in the middle here. I do like a communal table because you guys know I'm a solo traveler. So when I come on board, I don't always have people to sit with. That has been something that I enjoy is their communal tables. I don't really like the fact that they sit in the middle of kind of where everybody's walking through and eating. Makes it a little um, awkward and feels a little bit more crowded. These doors leading outside, they've actually kept closed um, for the duration of the cruise so that y'all come in this way and you get your hands clean. Random elevator. So keep your eyes open. You never know where you're gonna see an elevator on this cruise line. All right, so that is deck 14, 15, and 16 on the aft side of the ship. Let's now head downstairs. I'll walk you through those different floors and then we'll cut back up on the other side of the ship to show you the forward section of deck 14, 15, and 16. So welcome to the black and white club or area in the back. This is their multi-purpose space. So it is on the aft section of the ship on deck seven, and it is gonna have amazing views of the clear water here in the Bahamas. So if you need somewhere to read, I'm not sure if these are the right chairs for this. So they are probably more lounge-like chairs, but you will see that um, I'm stepping down here. One thing that I do wanna call out for this ship is there are a lot of random steps. So if you have fall issues or mobility issues, there's a lot of like random steps that you just have to be very cautious of. I know I've cruised often enough to see people fall on these random steps many times, more than I would like to count. Um, so please be careful if you come on this ship. I love the design of the lights here. They have a lot of glitz. That's kind of what these ships are known for is it's glitz, it's glamour. And so it's got, what you're gonna see in the next few rooms is it's contemporary, but it also feels a little vintage, if you will, at the end of the day. I don't know if that means that it's dated and coming back. So it's a 2010 build, it shouldn't be too dated, um, but some of the designs are definitely feeling a little, uh, not tired, I guess, but you know, just, they might need a little bit of updating. But I do actually find myself liking the style and the look. And as you know, I said that this was very similar to the Vision class ships. So one reason that I say that is because you have this hallway here. A lot of their restaurants um, and bars are gonna be off of hallways. There is, I'm gonna step out here real quick just to show you the outdoor space on this ship. Not gonna stay long, but it is exposed. So if you're looking to walk, you will get a little bit of shade, um, but you might get wet if it is raining since the awning is a little bit further up. And be careful on the wind coming back in through the door. I just got knocked um, as it pushed me um, back into um, the hallway. You're also gonna have a lot of photo opportunities. So if you're looking at taking a neat picture, they have a lot of sections like this throughout the ship um, where you'll be able to do that. The photo gallery here is, you know, one thing when I think of MSC, take a step back on the technology front and go into an older style ship in your mind. Um, they're gonna print out the pictures and post it up on the wall here and you're gonna then go through and find and pick out your different pictures. Not that it's that hard to do. They group them in a very easy way, um, but you will need to go through and source all of your pictures. Interesting tidbit, I did not know this um, and I wish that I did. The uh, internet folks are also your photo gallery folks. So if you need help with the internet, you're gonna also come to the photo gallery and they will be able to assist you with getting your internet to work or how to purchase it. One side note is if you're coming from Royal Caribbean where one device can be transferred, so I can log into my phone and then switch it over to my laptop, uh, that is not the case here. One device means you can only use it on that device. If you wanna use it on a laptop and a phone, you will need to buy two devices. There's no way to log out and change it over. Here is La Cantina Bisco. 
they do have pizza here. So this is also a pizza house for them where they make some pizzas, lots of seating area here, hangout spot. They've got a piano, they've got a speaker system on the other side. And then you're gonna have the butcher's cut. So this is one of the two special restaurants. This is the steakhouse. Give you a quick tour just to show you how it looks. I have not come in here. I did the Galaxy restaurant on the first night um, because I got it for free. Um, granted, I could have come here. I just chose to eat sushi instead. But you see that this does continue and it is a steakhouse. There is a section on the other side. I want to keep the video a little bit shorter. These uh, full ship tours, and I've been doing a lot of them recently, can get on the long side if I don't keep these um, legs of mine moving. But I will pan out and show you what all you can order here. There's no prices, so I actually have no idea what any of this stuff costs. It looks really good though. Um, but if you do get the diamond card because of status match, which is not hard to do, you will be able to go there for free and get their tasting menu, which is definitely enough food. Carrying on, you're gonna see that there is another picture opportunity. Lots of picture opportunities. Some pretty artwork. Here is another random elevator. I've walked this way many times, everybody. I'm thinking that I could go through that as a hallway and that's not actually the elevator bench just yet. So I gotta be cautious of that. You have one of your main elevator banks, staircase, and then you're gonna come into their centrum. So you're gonna have shops off of the centrum. You're gonna have the logo shop on the other side. That's where you can get all of your MSC merchandise and you've got your perfume, your Clinique in La Perfum Perfumeria. There's the word, so you guys can see it since I am not able to say that, unfortunately. Cafe Italia is another bar. You would think that they would serve coffee here in the morning, but this is not your morning coffee bar. I'm gonna show you that on two more floors down. This doesn't open in the morning. It's a coffee shop, but it does not open in the morning. I say coffee shop, it is a cafe, um, which is different. So when you think European, it's gonna be a little bit different. Sports bar here is a really neat space. So I actually like it in here, especially if you wanna see a game, you come on when you know one of your favorite teams are playing. There's plenty of spaces where you can squirrel away, watch your game. You've got some neat looking colors over here as well as bar. And they do have a bowling alley. So this is a candle pin bowling, something that I only discovered when I lived in Boston. And it goes for eight bucks. So if you wanna play this game, it is $8. I don't know how many actual games that's gonna give you, but that's how much it costs. That's gonna then drop me out here in the golden room. So this is actually the prettiest of all of the rooms to me. I love the different shades of orange that they've done in here um, and it carries throughout. But you see how it has that contemporary slash vintage style look going. But this room really seems to make it work. They are also a very musically inclined ship, I would say. So there have been tons of uh, musicians playing. In the evening, there'll be three, four different venues playing music, um, and they're all really good, and they've all got a different style of music. So whatever you're looking for, um, you'll probably be able to find that um, on the ship. Just walk around, just walk through the hallways, and you're gonna pass through all the different music venues. Picture opportunity, and two more elevators. So make sure that you are looking at the signs, I was gonna see if I could find one, not here, on where all the elevators are. So if you see a ship sign, you'll see where the different elevators are located. Just keep those in mind, especially if you don't wanna walk the full ship. It can feel quite long when you go from forward to aft. Here is La Luna. So this is another nightclub kind of feeling, very loungy. Um, this is probably my least favorite because it's on the darker side. Um, I've tried to take some footage of this singer last night. She was fantastic, by the way. Um, and the pianist accompanying her, but I couldn't get it to turn out because it was so dark in here. Um, but this is a really well attended place as well because the performers are really good. Staircase here, interesting enough, to the casino. So you know that I don't film in casinos, they frown on that. The casino does look like it is open today in their private island. Um, but the one thing that I'll say, downside about La Luna for that, is you all guessed it, the smoke smell will carry all the way up those stairs. And when you walk in this space, you go, huh, the casino's around here somewhere, right? More elevators, just pointing those out as we kind of walk through. But here is the sign that I was saying that, make sure that you find one of these and look at it. I found this extremely helpful 
on this ship. So we are here, but each one of these is gonna have different elevators. So make sure that you do um, pay attention to this shot, this sign. It, it has really helped me and benefited me. So you're gonna have the Pantheon Theater, which is a really cool design. So again, you've got stairs walking into here to go up. They've got them well illuminated, but I find these Mickey lights often will um, cause me to blur over, especially if it's late in the evening. But they've got some really neat enhancements, um, neat seating area back here. So if you just wanna come and hang out in the back room and not actually see the show, but hear it, you can do that in those seats. But their balcony's got really neat stadium seating to it so that everybody is gonna have an awesome view. One thing that I really liked, I came to set up here for the second show on Saturday night. It is a glass barrier. So unlike on other cruise lines, um, you're gonna have a rail and who, you know, let me know in the comments if you sat in one of the seats where you can't see because there's a bar going through your line of vision. That does not happen here because they switched it over to glass, which I think is a fantastic idea. Lots of seating. This was not um, full on the first night. The first party was um, our sell away party. Uh, excuse me, sell away was at six o'clock, the party. The show started at seven and that's when we actually left Miami. And so there was nobody here. They were all outside watching this ship sell away. Can't blame them for that. But the shows have been really good. Um, the vocalists have been um, superb up on the stage. All right, so now I am going to walk uh, down a flight. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go from deck seven. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning of this. And we're gonna go down to deck six to explore a little bit more. All right, welcome to deck six. Um, so you're gonna have the entrance to the theater here. So if you want the traditional entrance, you can do that there. And I'm gonna quickly cut through the casino. All right, so I'll show you the casino bar here. It's actually been quite busy. It is a large casino bar, which has been nice. And you're gonna have your cashier over to the right. But coming out of the casino, we are now on deck six. You're gonna enter into the Piazza del Dodge. You can see that it's definitely gonna have an Italian vibe to it. But you're also gonna notice the first cruise card activation point. So again, taking a step back with technology, if you want to be able to easily get off the ship, make sure that you're activating your credit card that you uh, want that to be charged to before you get off the ship. That is not done as part of the check-in process. So this again has a very Italian kind of feel to it. Um, the seats don't look that comfortable, but there've been a lot of people hanging out here, um, enjoying lots of groups on the sailing, some good shops, people talking to us about Effie, your local Effie representative, always help you out. You're gonna have some treats over here um, that are complimentary if you come on the MSC Divina, and you're gonna have a place where you can get coffee and beverages as well. More stairs, so again, make sure you're paying attention. It's something I am intentionally making sure that I do as I walk through this ship, um, especially with a video camera in my hand so that I do not fall. You've got your port merchant or uh, the mini mall, as it is called here. I had to take a step back and look at the sign where you can get all your liquor, tobacco products, and any travel essentials you may have left behind. Interestingly, they actually have um, electric shavers in there. So if you ever get a shaver and you just want one, you can do that. So this is the middle section of the centrum, and you get your first look at the Swarkovsky staircase. So that is the glitz and glamour that a lot of people talk about, and it is well illuminated. It is very, very pretty, and you're gonna have lots of seating around here uh, where you can look down at the musician, and they're normally always pretty good once again, but there's normally always somebody performing here. Behind me, you're gonna have your shore excursion office. Now, <clears throat> this shore excursion office actually looks like guest services. They are not guest services, they are shore excursions. So if you come here on deck six, they can only help you with shore excursions. Guest services is gonna be located downstairs. I think they probably should switch the two, but hey, that's just me. This one's just a lot more visible and I think a nicer desk. More shops over here on the right. And one neat shop that they also have is you've got the I can't pronounce the word, I can't see it all yet. Let's walk over here and take a look at it. It's wrapped all the way around. 
La Carmela. And that is gonna be your kid's shop. So luckily they've got a display window. You've got puzzles, games, toys, candies, all sorts of great stuff um, inside this little store here. So if you've got kiddos that are coming on board, again, not many kids on here, so I'm surprised they've got kind of a store dedicated to kids, um, but that is one place you can take them. You've got the Black Crab. So this is gonna be the restaurant. So it feels like, you know, any old main dining room. Let me see if I can get this door open. Looks like I will be able to. And I've actually enjoyed the main dining room. Came in here last night, took about an hour and a half. It was a slower start, but it got picked up. Food was good. It wasn't anything to write home about, but it was good food at the end of the day. It got me full, so I was fine with that. But it's a neat little section. One interesting tidbit, I didn't feel like it was as hectic um, as some of the other cruise lines um, in their main dining room. Also, if you look over here at the windows, and I don't know if you can tell this through the camera, but the windows, I just find it interesting, um, distort the outside image a little bit. So it's really thick glass, of course, because they have to go up through tremendous pressure should the ship be in bad weather, um, but it distorts the color a little bit, or not the color, but the look of the outside. So it kind of looks like you're looking through a magnifying glass a little bit. Walking down, you'll see that there are more, I call them Disney lights. I don't even know if that's the right word for these rope lights. I don't know where I got that from. Um, but you'll see this is the lower level of the black crab. And so we are, of course, at the aft section of the ship. They do keep true to food in the aft section of the ship, entertainment on the forward section of the ship. So if you're ever lost in trying to figure out which direction you need to go, ask yourself, is it food or is it um, a show? And that'll tell you if you need to go forward or backwards. Walking through the hallway, you're gonna see guest services up ahead. Get your main staircase and elevator bank over here on the right. Another activation point for credit cards. Again, that is huge. If you wanna make sure, especially if you're coming here for a weekend, that you can very easily get off the ship on Monday morning, um, make sure that you do that. Lots of great seating around here once again. Um, the couches are pretty comfortable. I see a lot of groups here. So one thing with this ship, um, you know, I guess we see that a lot on the weekend ship sailings, is there are a good number of um, groups that come on board. So you've got guest services over here, just pointing them out. Luckily, there's a lot of people working, even though we're in port, which is a nice touch. I feel like on port days, they often lower the staff, but looks like they've got people over there to help out you're thinking have an overflow section. So I'm sure this will be used probably on Monday morning when the um, ship is taking off or when people are trying to get off the ship because a lot of people will not use those activation points even though they have told us over the PA system. Pedro, our cruise director, the voice in the sky, um, has mentioned that countless times. This is actually gonna be your coffee shop. So if you want a coffee, forget the name of this bar, uh, Davina Bar, this is where you're gonna get your coffee. So different than probably an American cruise line, they don't have a Starbucks or a walk-up cafe. What they're gonna have here is a proper European cafe where you order, you sit down, and you drink in a proper mug, um, which I think is really nice. I actually like that experience. I do that anyway when I'm on um, Freedom of the Seas. I go to my cafe promenade. I'll then go sit in one of the high tops in front of Ben and & Jerry's, and that's where I then enjoy my coffee before I head out. Walking back through on deck 16 as I cut to the forward section of the ship to show you what's on the upper section of there, I wanna just quickly show you the cigar bar. So it is um, a proper cigar bar, so if you want to, I guess you could have a cigarette in here, um, but if you wanted to come in here and hang out, they do have a bar. Some of you may remember the old Connoisseur Club on uh, Royal Caribbean's fleet. So this is similar to that. It's a larger scale than what that was, but it is also, um, a nice room, they do have a humidor over there, so if you wanted to purchase any cigars, you could do that. So on deck 14, um, in the forward section of the ship, you're gonna see lots of mirrors. That is a theme throughout this cruise ship is lots and lots of mirrors and reflective surfaces. This is the Aria Spa. And you can buy um, different packages when you sign up for MSC. Um, one of those is the Aria package, which will give you, I think, discounts and maybe some extra treatments. I'm in the spa area here. But this will be the entrance to the spa. It's nice, it's got a good little hallway here. 
walking all the way back, and they're going to have reception down here checking you in. But this is also going to be where your gym is at. So I know that that is everybody's favorite part of a cruise ship, so I'll show you the gym. I also think that it's neat that they have a um, bar here, smoothie bar. Um, they call it Enjoy the Color. And so they will have different um, kind of smoothies or juices that they can make for you, um, all based on the name here. It's the cores of the aura, or aria, as they call it here. Now coming into the gym, first of all, love any gym that is at the forward section of the ship, where you're gonna have beautiful views when you work out. Lots of TVs here. I don't know that anything's really facing those, um, but you will have paid spin classes you can do. You can only use those during an actual spin class. You're gonna have a good amount of treadmills and actual machines here. So if you're looking to work out, they have a ton of machines. Um, it is a little bit limited on the dumbbells. There's no Smith machine, there's no bench press, but they do have a few benches that you can come in here with the dumbbells. And one thing that you need to note, make sure you check your conversions before you come here. If you are coming from the US, um, these are in kilograms. So it's gonna be a little bit different if you're not accustomed to those. Stationary bikes, they've got ellipticals. Though I'm surprised nobody's out here working out. Look at the beautiful view of the lighthouse there as I walk into the bike. Beautiful view. And you're gonna have more pieces of equipment over on this side as well. So depending on what you wanna work out, these are probably gonna be your best bet if you're looking to uh, replicate some kind of an exercise. I would recommend using those. And one thing that they did a good job here is giving you a stretching section or place that you can do ab section, core workouts, things of that nature. And then some medicine and Swiss balls over here. All right, so I'm heading back to my cabin now on the MSC Davina. I hope that you have enjoyed this ship tour. Um, let me know down in the comments what you think of the decor and how everything looks here. As you can see, it's a little bit different um, setup of a ship. It's got that contemporary slash vintage look that in most cases, I think that it actually works. And I like the layout and floor plans because I'm not finding myself getting lost or running into dead ends. All right, everybody. This is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.